This is now the part 5 of the LEED V4 Reference Guide for Homes Design and Construction Online Review. Again, all the pictures or images in this video are from Google and USGBC website. If you have comments, suggestions, or complaints regarding the images, pictures, or in this video itself, please email me at nelka underscore rocco at yahoo.com and I will immediately reply to you and take action on whatever the reason of your email. Thank you. Why I created this online reviewer? To help myself and others to pass the lead AP exam in one shot. These are the lead credit categories. On my previous video, we discussed the first credit of location and transportation, which is the lead for neighborhood development. Now, we will proceed to the second credit, which is the site selection. Site selection is the first credit in the prescriptive path. You can have 8 points for this credit. It has 5 options and in option 1, it has path 1 and path 2. Site selection. Intent. To encourage construction in environmentally preferable locations and avoid development of sensitive lands. Possible for 8 points. Requirements. Option 1. Sensitive land protection, 3 to 4 points. Path 1. Previously developed for 4 points. Select a lot such that at least 75 of the total buildable land is previously developed. Or, Path 2. Avoidance of sensitive land for 3 points. Do not develop new buildings, hardscapes, roads or parking areas on portions of sites that meet any of the following criteria. Prime farmland. The development footprint does not consist of prime farmland, unique farmland, or farmland of statewide or local importance as defined by the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, Title 7, Volume 6, Parts 400 to 699, Section 657.5, or local equivalent for projects outside the U.S. Parkland, land that prior to acquisition for the project was public parkland. Unless land of equal or greater value of parkland is accepted in trade by the public landowner, park authority projects are exempt. Floodplain Land that lies within a flood hazard area shown on a legally adopted flood hazard map, such as the Federal Emergency Management Agency or FEMA, 100-year floodplain, or otherwise legally designated by the local jurisdiction of the state. Habitat Land specifically identified as habitat for the following Species listed as threatened or endangered under the U.S. Endangered Species Act or the State's Endangered Species Act or species or ecological communities classified by nature served as G8, possibly extinct G1, critically imperiled or Species listed as threatened or endangered species under local equivalent standards in areas outside of the United States that are not covered by nature serve data. Wetlands Land that is either 1. Within 50 feet or 15 meters of any wetlands as defined by the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations 40 CFR Parts 230 to 233 and Part 22 and isolated wetlands or areas of special concern identified by state or local rule or 2. Within the setback distances from wetlands prescribed local, state or national regulations whichever is more stringent or water bodies land that is within 100 feet or 30 meters of a water body defined as seas, lakes, rivers, streams, and tributaries that support or could support fish, recreation, or industrial use, consistent with the terminology of the Clean Water Act 40 CFR 122.2. Requirements Option 2. Infill Development for 2 points. Select a lot such that at least 75% of the land within one half mile or 800 meters from the project boundary is previously developed land. Water bodies and publicly owned parks are excluded from the calculation. 
For projects within city limits or towns with populations of less than 20,000, select a lot where at least 75% of the land immediately adjacent to the project boundary is previously developed land. A bordering street itself does not constitute previously developed land. Instead, it is the status of the property on the other side of the segment of the street that matters. Any fraction of the boundary that borders a water body is excluded from the calculation. Option 3. Open space for one point. Select a location within one half mile or 800 meters of a publicly accessible or community-based open space that is at least 3 fourth acre or 0.3 hectare or create publicly available open space on the project site. The open space requirement can be met with either one large open space or two smaller spaces totaling 3 fourth acre or 0.3 hectare. Option 4. Street network for one point. Locate the project in an area of higher intersection density defined as an area whose existing streets and sidewalks create at least 90 intersections per square mile or 35 intersections per square kilometer. When determining the number of intersections, include the following. Intersections within a 1 fourth mile or 400 meter radius of project boundary. Streets and sidewalks that are available for general public use and not gated. Sidewalk intersections provided they are a unique right-of-way, example, sidewalk through a city park, and publicly accessible alleys. Exclude the following, intersections in gated areas which are not considered available for public use, with the exception of education and healthcare campuses and military bases where gates are used for security purposes, water bodies and public parks and intersections leading only to a dead end or cul-de-sac. And or option 5, bicycle network and storage for one point. Need both of the following requirements. Bicycle network. Design or locate the project such that a primary entry and or bicycle storage is within a 100 yard or 180 meters walking distance or bicycling distance from a bicycle network that connects to at least one of the following. All choices must be within 3 miles or 4,800 meters bicycling distance project boundary. 1. At least 10 uses, CLT community resources. 2. A school or employment center. And 3. Bus rapid transit stops, light or heavy rail stations, commuter rail stations and or ferry terminals. If the network borders the project boundary, a safe all-weather route must exist between the bicycle network and the project's bicycle storage and or main entrance. Planned bicycle rails or lanes may be counted if they are fully funded at the certificate of occupancy date and are scheduled for completion within one year of that date. Previously is bicycle network and now it is bicycle storage. Provide short-term bicycle storage capacity equal to 2.5% or more of all building occupants but no fewer than 4 storage spaces per building. Short-term bicycle storage must be within 100 feet or 30 meters of a primary entry. Provide long-term bicycle storage capacity equal to 30% of all building occupants but no less than 1 storage space per residential unit. Long-term bicycle storage must be within 100 feet or 30 meters of a primary entry. Bicycle storage capacity may not be double counted. Storage that is fully allocated to the occupants of non-project facilities cannot also serve project occupants. A single-family dwelling unit with enclosed garage meets the bicycle storage requirement. Behind the intent the selection of appropriate residential sites is an important aspect of sustainability. Loss of farmland and habitat for endangered wildlife is one of the consequences of suburban and exurban sprawl. In addition to using prime land's resources, sprawl affects floodplains, wetlands, and water bodies that provide habitats for plants and wildlife. Habitat disruption can reduce water quality and increase erosion and flooding. 
problems caused by development on sensitive sites are often discovered only after the damage has occurred. Building on previously developed land or within already developed areas reduces sprawl, takes advantage of existing infrastructure, often puts residents closer to community resources, and can enhance existing communities. Houses built on infill sites are often more marketable and retain higher resale value. Selecting sites near public open space promotes outdoor activity, recreation, and community gatherings, and access to open space can raise surrounding property values. Open space also provides environmental benefits such as natural cooling, reduction in heat island effect, erosion control, rainwater absorption, and habitat for wildlife. Building on sites along dense street networks with sidewalks encourages residents to walk and bicycle instead to drive. Greater intersection density and community resources within walking and bicycling distance are associated with reduced vehicle miles or kilometers traveled, an indicator of lower greenhouse gas emissions and healthier communities. According to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics, Vehicle use in the U.S. nearly tripled from 1 trillion to 2.99 trillion miles per year between 1970 and 2005. Vehicles now account for more than 20% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. A good site minimizes vehicle trips and encourages the use of public transportation, walking and bicycling, thereby contributing less climate change, smog and pollution. Providing secure bicycle storage close to dedicated paths and low-speed streets that offer easy access to local community resources makes bicycling safe and convenient. Step-by-step -step guidance. Option 1. Sensitive land protection. Path 1. Previously developed. Step 1. Evaluate existing site. Acquire aerial photographs tax maps, or other appropriate documents to determine whether the site was previously developed. Calculate the percentage of the buildable land of the site that was previously developed, defined as having pre-existing paving, construction, or altered landscapes. See Figure 1. See Definition of Buildable Land. Landscapes altered for agriculture, forestry, or use as preserved natural area do not count as previously developed. However, constructed parkland not maintained in its natural state, such as a city park, is considered previously developed. Figure 1 shows how to calculate the percentage of buildable land, illustration by Terrell Broyles. Step 2. Document credit. Using maps, Indicate previously developed and undeveloped site areas to show that 75% or more of the buildable area on the existing lot was previously developed. Part 2. Avoidance of sensitive land. Step 1. Evaluate site for prime farmland. Based on the criteria listed in Option 1, Part 2, evaluate the existing site for compliance. Verify compliance by referring to the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, Title 7, Volume 6, Parts 400 to 699, Section 657.5, or equivalent for projects outside the U.S. Visit the website www.websoilsurvey.nrcs.usda.gov. Click on Start WSS to start the soil survey. Enter the project address under the Quick Navigation tab. To zoom in, draw a rectangle around the area. Create the area of interest, AOI, around the project boundary using the red AOI tool found just above the map. The area should be no smaller than 1 fourth square mile or 400 meters. Soil data may be inaccurate or not available for smaller areas. To determine whether soils are prime or unique, Click on the Soil Data Explorer navigation button. Different soil types appear on the map, and alongside is a list of the soils. On the left menu tab, click on Land Classifications, then Farmland Classification. Select View Rating to see a list of all soil types on the site. Under the map is a key explaining the symbols. Confirm that none of the soils are prime farmland. Farmland of statewide importance. 
farmland of local importance or unique farmland. Soils listed as prime if or unique if are not considered prime and unique farmlands in this credit. Further to step-by-step -step guidance, Step 2. Evaluate Site for Parkland. Acquire aerial photographs, tax maps, or other appropriate documents to determine whether the site was previously parkland. Step 3. Evaluate Site for Floodplains. See LT Prerequisite Floodplain Avoidance on how to document floodplain avoidance. Step 4. Evaluate Site for Habitat. Verify that no habitat areas listed in the rating system requirements are within the project boundary. In the U.S., consult the U.S. Endangered Species Act, the state's Endangered Species Act, if any, and or species or ecological communities classified by nature serve as GH, possibly extinct, G1, critically imperiled, or G2, imperiled. For projects outside the U.S., Determine what species are listed as threatened or endangered by national or provincial government agencies or organizations equivalent to NatureServe. Projects in Canada and Mexico may be able to use NatureServe data. See further explanation international tips. Access NatureServe data for the project's county using the following instructions and use it to demonstrate that the project site does not contain endangered species habitat. 1. Go to natureserve.org slash explorer slash And number 2. Choose search species, see arrow in figure 2. This is the figure 2. NatureServe search species. NatureServe screenshots used with permission from www.natureserve.org This is how to navigate the website. Select all species including plants, animals, and fungi or lichens. Then, select location at the bottom left corner, see arrow in figure 3. Select U.S. counties, see arrow in figure 4. From the drop-down menu, select the project state and county and hit the search now button. Select download species data, review the data for any species that are listed as GH or SH, possibly extinct, G1 or S1, critically imperiled, or G2 or S2 imperiled and provide an explanation for why the project does not have or does not disturb any of the relevant habits listed. Step 5. Evaluate site for wetlands. Verify that no hardscapes or buildings are within 50 feet or 15 meters or the setback distance established by regulations whichever is more stringent of a wetland. Map the extent of the project development and its relationship to any wetlands. Step 6. Evaluate site for water bodies. Verify that no hardscapes or buildings are within 100 feet or 30 meters of a water body. Map the extent of the project development and its relationship to any water bodies. Still further to step-by-step -step guidance. Option 2. Infill development. Step 1. Evaluate adjacent properties. Acquire an aerial photograph or other appropriate document showing the site and all adjacent land within one half mile or 800 meters of the site. Exclude all water bodies and public parks adjacent to the lot from the total lot perimeter calculation. See figure 6 and 8. For a site in a town with a population of less than 20,000, confirm that at least 75% of the lot perimeter immediately borders previously developed land. And see figure 7. This is Figure 6, Qualifying Infill Site. The parkland is excluded from the perimeter calculation, illustration by Terror Borlas. This is Figure 7, Qualifying Small Town Infill Site. The entire lot perimeter is surrounded by developed land, illustration by Terror Borlas. And this is Figure 8, Site does not qualify, although the lot is surrounded by previously developed land, the one half mile perimeter does not touch on any qualifying land. Illustration by Terrell Broilers. Step 2. Document credit. Provide an aerial photograph or other appropriate document confirming that at least 75% of the land adjacent to the site perimeter is previously developed. Still further to step by step guidance. This is now option 3. Open space. Step 1. Evaluate adjacent properties. 
Determine whether the project site appears to be within a one half mile or 800 meter walking distance of a publicly accessible open space area of at least 3 port acre or 0.3 hectare or two areas totaling 3 fourth acre. Open spaces must consist predominantly of subscapes such as soil, grass, shrubs, and trees. Examples include natural open spaces, city, county, and state parks, play areas, and other community open spaces specifically intended for recreational use. Areas around ponds can be counted as open space if they have usable, accessible recreational space such as walking or bicycle paths. Private lands open to the public for passive recreation are also acceptable. Provided there is deeded public access or a history of allowable public use and anticipated continued future public use for at least 10 years. Step 2. Confirm walking distances and pedestrian facilities. Calculate the exact walking distance from the project to the edge of interior of the open space. See figures 9 and 10. Confirm that there are sidewalks, paths, or other pedestrian routes along the entire length of the walking route. Routes without pedestrian facilities are not acceptable. If using an online walk distance calculator such as Google Maps, take note of the warning that the route may be missing sidewalks or pedestrian paths. The project team will have to confirm on-site that safe walking routes are in place. For new multi-building developments, the walking distance can be measured from the center of the project. Provided the distance from the center of the project to the farthest building does not exceed one-fourth mile or 400 meters. With this approach, each building in a project may qualify for this credit. For any buildings farther than one-fourth mile or 400 meters from the center of the project, distances must be recalculated for each building. This is Figure 9, Walking Distance to Open Space in ArcGIS Online, used by permission. Copyright 2013 S3 and its data providers. All rights reserved. And then figure 10, Walk Score Street Smarts Map. This tool may only work well if there is a Walk Score recognized establishment inside or directly bordering the open space to use as an endpoint. Walk Score screenshot used with permission from www.walkscore.com. Still further to step by step guidance, we are now on option 4. Street Network Step 1. Determine walk score availability For any project size, enter the project address in walkscore.com using the Street Smart function. If available, the report will include the number of intersections per square mile or square kilometer. If this number is 90 or 35 or more, the project meets the requirements of this credit. See Figure 11. Figure 11 Walk score report of total intersections per square mile. Walk score screenshots used with permission from www.walkscore.com. Step 2. Use alternative to walk score. If the walk score report is not available or the project team does not choose to use walk score, first determine whether the project site is larger or smaller than 2 acres or 0.8 hectare. For projects less than 2 acres or 0.8 hectare, Draw a circle within a 1 4 mile or 400 meter radius from the center of the project site. Identify and count all qualifying intersections. If there are 18 or more qualifying intersections within the circle, the project qualifies for this credit. See Figure 12. If there are fewer than 18 qualifying intersections, determine whether any portions of the area, such as public park lot or water bodies, can be excluded from the calculations. For example, if 25% of the total area within one fourth mile of the project is a park, then the required number of intersections is reduced by 25% or 13.5, round up to 14. Here, since there are 14 qualifying intersections, the project achieves the credit. This is Figure 12, qualifying intersections example for a small lot project where intersections are counted within one fourth mile or 400 meter radius from the center of the project. For projects 2 acres or 0.8 hectare or larger, draw a line that is one fourth mile or 400 meters outside the project boundary. Calculate the area within the line and subtract the project area from the total. 
the remaining area must have an average of 90 intersections per square mile or 35 intersections per square kilometer. See figure 13. Areas such as public parks and water bodies may be subtracted from the total area to reduce the number of required qualifying intersections. Showing is the figure 13. Qualifying intersections example for a larger lot project where intersections are counted within one fourth mile or 400 meter radius from the project boundary. Still further on step-by-step -step guidance, we are now on option 5, bicycle network. Step 1. Select project site. Select a site close to existing community resources as defined in option 5 of the rating system requirements. Step 2. Identify any existing bicycle networks. Use bicycle maps or mapping tools to determine whether a bicycle network consisting of any combination of dedicated and on-street bicycle lanes, dedicated bicycle paths, and low-speed streets exist within a 200-yard or 180-meter walking or bicycling distance of the project boundary. See definition of bicycle network. If maps are unclear, walk the project site and adjacent neighborhoods to determine whether access to a bicycle network exists or check with local transit authorities to determine locations. If a bicycle network exists, continue to the next step. If no bicycle network exists, the project cannot pursue this option. Planned and funded bicycle trails or lanes may be counted if they are funded by the project occupancy date and will be built within one year after project occupancy. Step 3. Evaluate bicycle network's connection to community resources. Use maps, online tools, or personal observation to prepare a list of at least 10 local community resources, a school or employment center or transit stops as listed in the rating system requirements that are within a 3-mile or 4,800-meter bicycling distance of the project boundary. Confirm that the resources are located at listed locations and are publicly accessible through visual inspection, telephone, or internet research. Calculate the bicycling distance from the project to its confirmed resource via the bicycle network. Online mapping tools may not indicate a route suitable for bicycling. Compare the computer-generated route with the actual bicycle network. See Figure 14. Shown is the Figure 14, a map showing bicycling paths to several resources in ArcGIS Online. At its primary destination, there are multiple community resources. Used by permission, copyright 2013, ESRI and its data providers. All rights reserved. Step 4. Prepare resource list. Confirm that all listed resources qualify for one of the three categories listed in the rating system requirements. List each resource, its address, a description, and the calculated bicycling distance from the project site. If the resource is an employment center, see definition of employment center. Confirm the total employed occupant count and the area acreage, along with the calculated bicycling distance from the project site. If resource is a bus rapid transit stop, rail station, or ferry terminal, confirm that the transportation service is active and accessible to the public. Step 5. Provide bicycle storage facilities. For multifamily developments, Provide short and long-term bicycle storage per the rating system requirements. See further explanation bicycle storage calculation. Prepare documentation showing calculation and bicycle storage locations. For single-family residences, provide plans and construction photos showing an enclosed garage or dedicated covered bicycle storage area that meets the requirements. We will now proceed to further explanation. Definition of prime farmland. NRCS defines prime farmland soils, NSSH Part 622.04, as follows. Prime farmland is land that has the best combination of physical and chemical characteristics for producing food, feed, forage, fiber, and oilseed crops, and that is available for these uses. It has the combination of soil properties, growing season, and moisture supply needed to produce sustained high yields of crops in an economic manner if it is treated and managed according to acceptable farming methods. In general, prime farmland has an adequate and dependable water supply from precipitation or irrigation. 
a favorable temperature in growing season, an acceptable level of acidity or alkalinity, an acceptable content of salt or sodium, and few or no rocks. Its soils are permeable to water and air. Prime farmland is not excessively eroded or saturated with water for long periods of time, and it either does not flood frequently during the growing season or is protected from flooding. Users of the list of prime farmland map units should recognize that soil properties are only one of several criteria that are necessary. Other considerations include land use. Prime farmland is designated independently of current land use, but it cannot be areas of water or urban or built-up land as defined for the natural resource inventories. Map units that are complexes or associations containing components of urban land or miscellaneous areas as part of the map unit name cannot be designated as prime farmland. The Soil Survey Memorandum of Understanding determines the scale of mapping and should reflect local land use interest in designing of map units. Frequency of flooding. Some map units may include both prime farmland and land not prime farmland because of variations in flooding frequency. Bicycle storage calculation. For short-term bicycle storage, use equation 1. Equation 1. Number of building occupants multiplied by 2.5% equals to number of short-term bicycle rack spaces. For example, a multifamily building has 72 one-bedroom units. The required default number of building occupants is 2 per unit or 144 total occupants. The team applies equation 1. 144 multiplied by 2.5% is equal to 3.6. Rounding up 3.6 to 4, the team finds that the project must provide 4 short-term bicycle rack spaces. They check this value against the absolute minimum number of spaces required, which is also 4. For long-term bicycle storage, use equation 2. Equation 2 is number of building occupants multiplied by 30% is equal to number of long-term bicycle rack spaces. For example, as above, the 72-unit multifamily building is assumed to have 144 total occupants. The team applies equation 2. 144 times 30% is equal to 43.2. The team then rounds up 43.2 to 44. However, the absolute minimum number of spaces required is 1 per unit, or in this case, 72 spaces. Therefore, the project must provide 72 long-term bicycle rack spaces. International tips. To meet the requirements regarding prime farmland, projects outside the U.S. need to find a local equivalent to the National Resources Conservation Services or NRCS Soil Survey. Related credit tips. There are four related credits on this credit site selection. One is WE Credit Outdoor Water Use. On-site open space could increase outdoor water use. WE credit total water use. On-site open space could increase total water use. SS credit rainwater management. On-site open space provides additional area to manage rainwater. SS credit heat island reduction. Pursuing the bicycle option of LT credit site selection will affect the amount of hardscape that must be addressed in heat island reduction. Changes from Lead for Homes 2008 Street network and bicycle network are new options. All other options are taken from credits in location and leakages and sustainable sites. Infield Developments has a new definition for projects outside small towns. Contract language recommendations – none. Technical resources – none. Reference standards – none. Exemplary performance – while the credit is capped at 8 points, options 1 to 5 add up to a total of 9 points. Projects that earn all 9 points should take 8 points in this credit and 1 exemplary performance point. There is no exemplary performance for exceeding the requirements of any single option. Verification and submittals. Supporting verification materials made available by the project team. Previously developed. Provide historical documents maps or comparable evidence of previous development or 
have green radar conduct on-site verification of existing infrastructure, example, foundation footings. Group project. This calculation can be performed for entire new development and earn credit if 75% of buildable land was previously developed. Land that was previously cleared for development does not qualify as previously developed. Continuation to verification and submittals. Avoidance of sensitive land. Prime farmland. Provide soil data map to demonstrate that development is not on qualifying farmland. Parkland. If bordering parkland, provide area map or other documentation to demonstrate that land was not previously parkland. Or, if land was public parkland, provide documentation that land of equal or greater value is traded by public land owner. Floodplain. Provide a floodplain map that demonstrates project is above floodplain. Habitat. Provide documentation that demonstrates that project is not land identified as habitat. Wetlands. If near wetlands, provide photos or plans demonstrating that development is not within 50 feet of wetlands or complies with local regulations if more stringent. Or water bodies. If near water, provide photos or plans demonstrating that development is not within 100 feet of water body. Or for the group project, credit can be granted if entire development meets credit requirements. Infield development. Provide map and documentation to demonstrate that 75% of land within one half mile of project boundary is previously developed land. Or, provide documentation that project is within city limits of town with population of less than 20,000. Provide map and documentation that at least 75% of land surrounding project boundary is previously developed. Group project. Credit can be granted if entire development meets credit requirements. Open space. Provide maps and calculations of publicly accessible open space of at least three-fourth acre within one-half mile of home. Group project. Walking distance can be measured from center of community provided distance from center of community to Vardas building does not exceed one-fourth mile. Street Network. Provide walk score report that lists number of intersections or for project sites smaller than 2 acres, provide map with 1 fourth mile radius drawn around project boundary, circle and count qualifying intersections. Or for project sites larger than 2 acres, provide map with 1 fourth mile radius drawn around project boundary, calculate area of land within 1 fourth mile of project boundary, circle and count qualify intersections and calculate intersection density group project calculations are for area immediately surrounding entire development's project boundary bicycle storage provide drawings or plans to demonstrate that adequate secure covered space is available for multifamily provide calculations for number of buildings occupants and number of required short-term and long-term bicycle storage spaces Verify lists of maps of community resources within one-fourth mile or one-half mile walking distance of home. For group project, each building must meet bicycle storage requirements. Bicycle network. Provide map or other documentation showing community resources, school, employment center, or transit stops within three-mile bicycling distance of project boundary. Provide map or other documentation showing that qualifying resources are on bicycle network. Group project. Three-mile bicycling distance is measured from entire development's project boundary. Now this is for the verification team, verification and submittals. Verification team. Previously developed. Verify historical documents, maps, or comparable evidence of previous development or Conduct on-site verification of existing infrastructure, example, foundation footings. Still under the verification team. Avoidance of sensitive land. Prime farmland. Verify that soil data map or supporting documentation is for actual location of development. Parkland. Visually verify that development is not next to parkland or verify documentation that developed land was not parkland or if parkland was traded for land to public land owner. Floodplain. 
verify that floodplain map is for actual location of buildings and that building is above floodplain. Habitat. Verify that habitat documentation is for actual location of buildings. Wetlands. Visually verify that development is not within 50 feet of wetlands or complies with local regulations if more stringent. Water bodies. Visually verify that development is not within 100 feet of water body. Infield development. Verify map and calculations that development within one half mile of project boundary is previously developed. Or, for projects in small towns, conduct on-site verification that at least 75% of lot borders previously developed land. Open space. Conduct on-site verification of publicly accessible open space of at least three-fourth acre within one half mile of home, or verify maps and calculations of publicly accessible open space of at least three-fourth acre within one half mile of home. Street network. Verify that documentation is for actual location of development and that required intersection density has been met. Bicycle storage. Verify that adequate bicycle storage is installed on site. Bicycle network. Verify documentation that qualifying resources are on bicycle network. Glossary. Buildable land. The portion of the site where construction can occur, including land voluntarily set aside and not constructed on. When used in density calculations, buildable land exclude public rights of way and land excluded from development by codified law. Previously developed, altered by paving, construction, and or land use that would typically have required regulatory permitting to have been initiated. Alterations may exist now or in the past. Land that is not previously developed and landscapes altered by current or historical clearing or filing, agricultural or forestry use, or preserved natural area used are considered undeveloped land. The date of previous development permit issuance constitutes the date of previous development, but permit issuance in itself does not constitute previous development. Development Footprint The total land area of a project site covered by buildings, streets, parking areas, and other typically impermeable surfaces constructed as part of the project. Prime Farmland Land that has the best combination of physical and chemical characteristics for producing food, feed, forage, fiber, and oil seed crops and that is available for these uses. As determined by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Service, a U.S.-based methodology that sets criteria for highly productive soil. For a complete description of what qualifies a prime farmland, see U.S. Code for Federal Regulations, Title 7, Volume 6, Parts 400-699, Section 657.5. Water Body the surface water of a stream, first order and higher, including intermittent streams, arroyo, river, canal, lake, estuary, bay, or ocean. It does not include irrigation ditches. Density, a measure of the total building floor area or dwelling units on a parcel of land relative to the buildable land of that parcel. Units for measuring density may differ according to credit requirements, does not include structured parking. Walking distance, the distance that a pedestrian must travel between origins and destinations without obstruction in a safe and comfortable environment on a continuous network of sidewalks, all weather surface footpaths, crosswalks, or equivalent pedestrian facilities. The walking distance must be drawn from the entrance that is accessible to all building users. Bicycling distance, the distance that a bicyclist must travel between origins and destinations the entirety of which must be on a bicycle network. Bicycle network, a continuous network consisting of any combination of the following. 1. Off-street bicycle paths or trails of at least 8 feet or 2.5 meters wide for a two-way path and at least 5 feet or 1.5 meters wide for a one-way path. 2. Physically designated on-street bicycle lanes at least 5 feet or 1.5 meters wide. And number 3. Streets designated for a target speed of 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour or less. Employment Center, a non-residential area of at least 5 acres or 2 hectares with a job density of at least 50 employees per net acre, at least 125 employees per hectare net. 
bus rapid transit, an enhanced bus system that operates on exclusive bus lanes or other transit rights of way. The system is designed to combine the flexibility of buses with the efficiency of rail. Short-term bicycle storage, non-enclosed bicycle parking typically used by visitors for a period of two hours or less. Long-term bicycle storage, bicycle parking that is easily accessible to residents and employees and covered to protect bicycles from rain and snow. Hardscape, the inanimate elements of the building landscaping. It includes pavement, roadways, stone walls, wood and synthetic decking, concrete paths and sidewalks, and concrete, brick, and tile patios. Heat island effect, the thermal absorption by hardscape, such as dark, non-reflective pavement and buildings, and its subsequent radiation to surrounding areas. Other contributing factors may include vehicle exhaust, air conditioners, and street equipment. Tall buildings and narrow streets reduce airflow and exacerbate the effect. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Watch for the next video. Lead V4 Homes, Location and Transportation Credit 3, Compact Development. See you again later.